guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is fasciolopsiasis. So let's get started. So what is fasciolopsiasis? Fasciolopsiasis is caused by an infection with the intestinal fluke called fasciolopsis bruschi. The parasite affects and infects pigs, humans and dogs, especially in mainland China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia and across the Indian subcontinent. The parasites live on the walls of the duodenum and jejunum in the GI tract of humans and animals but can spread throughout the entire intestines in severe cases of infection. So from this definition of the disease, we get that it's an infection caused by the intestinal fluke called fasciolopsis bruschi, and this is actually an image of what the fluke looks like. And this parasite actually affects and infects pigs, humans and dogs, especially countries situated in the Middle East. So the parasites actually live in the walls of the duodenum and jejunum, which are the first parts of our small intestine. But in severe infections, they can actually spread throughout the intestines and cause a more severe infection. So microscopically, this is what these parasites look like. And this is the aspect that one can see with the naked eye. So now that we know what the basics of fasciolopsiasis is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So the parasite actually infects water snails after being released by infected mammalian feces. So that's human feces or dog feces or pig feces. And the metasaccharia which are released from the snails insist on aquatic plants like water spinach which are eaten raw by pigs and humans. The water itself can also be infective when it's drunk unheated. So the insisted saccharae exist not only on aquatic plants but also on the surface of the water. So if we take a closer look at this image on the left side of my screen, we see that the human defecates in the water source and then we have the eggs which hatch in the water and these form something called mercidia or a single form which is called a mercidium and it actually infects the snail and from the snail we have the development of saccharia or metasaccharia and the metasaccharia actually stick to water plants such as spinach or any herbs that are grown in very aquatic like regions and then one goes on to ingest the spinach or even the contaminated water itself so the insisted metasaccharia are eaten by the definitive host and then again we have the development of these intestinal flukes in the small intestine of the human and so the cycle continues so this is basically how one contracts the disease either by eating aquatic plants which are contaminated with these parasites or by drinking out of these dirty water sources. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of the disease. So many individuals infected with this disease may be asymptomatic but many especially those who have heavier infections with hundreds to thousands of flukes in their bowels they will go on to experience abdominal pain yellow diarrhea, which contains undigested food. Sometimes the patients may go on to suffer from a B12 malabsorption. So if the flukes are lining that duodenum, because the duodenum is responsible for absorption of the B12, there will be some sort of B12 malabsorption because these intestinal flukes actually affect most commonly the first two parts of the intestine, which is the duodenum and the jejunum. The patient may also suffer from edema, ascites, Hypoalbuminemia, because again, if these flukes line the intestine, we cannot absorb our proteins. And they will also have an eosinophilia. So the eosinophils are a type of white blood cells that increase, especially when we have an ongoing parasitic infection. So the blood tests in these patients will also show hyper-eosinophilia. So the flukes that are attached to the mucosal wall of the intestine will also go on to cause local inflammation ulceration and sometimes hemorrhaging so they will cause these patients to bleed out internally. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of fasciolopsiasis. So the diagnosis is made by the microscopic identification of eggs or rarely the adult flukes in the stool or vomitus of the patient. So in these two pictures we have image A and image B and this is actually what the adult worm or fluke looks like on microscopy. And this is what the eggs look like on microscopy. 
The blood sample, as we mentioned in the slide before, will also show signs of hypereosinophilia. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of this disease. So Praxiquantil is a drug of choice for the treatment of this infection. The recommended dose is 20 mg per kg of the patient, given orally as three doses over the course of a day. And this should clear out the infection quite rapidly and effectively. And that brings us to the end of this video on fasciolopsiasis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.